Okay, this is session number two of week number two also. And we are going to continue with the topic that we were developing um, yesterday at the beginning of the week. Uh, we were talking about uh, the uh, different um, definitions about intonation, express. We, are, uh, we were talking about tone and we were talking about vocalization yesterday. And now we're going to continue with that information because you know that uh, we have um, more information about those uh, elements. Um, and in this case, we are going to finish that topic. And also we are going to uh, see what is the next topic that we are going to develop. So in this case, we are going to continue with the information that we have about that uh, topic that is intonation. We are going to end that part and we are going to see the next topic that in this case is going to be, let me see. In this case, we are going to talk about what rather and will prefer. Uh, we are going to see what are the uses of will rather and will uh, prefer. We are going to explain all of that information. We are going to see some examples about uh, that information. We are going to have a knowledge check. That is the one that we have on the platform. Then we're going to perform a listening exercise. But all of that uh, thing is, um, and we are going to have some exercises too. Um, related to the topic and the uh, knowledge check and the listening exercise, you are going to find it on the platform. So in that case, we're going to do a work a little bit with the platform in a couple of minutes because uh, right now we're going to talk about the intonation because we have some information left about that topic. So we're going to uh, continue with that information and then we're going to talk about will rather and will prefer and that is the topic that we have for today so yesterday we were talking about the intonation and now we are going to continue with that part this is the last part that we have in here we have an, ex an example in this case and that is the question. When does the meeting start? And we were talking about um, what is the difference when we are making an affirmation and when we are making questions. So in that case, the tone of the voice is different from the one that we use for uh, affirmations. So we are going to continue from that part and we are going to see some examples more and a little bit of a, I'm just going to read and explain some information that I have for you in this case, because we're not going to have a, like a lot of uh, information on the document because it's going to be kind of um, long, but in this case, I'm just uh, want to to explain a little bit about this topic. So in this case, we're going to talk about the musicality of language. That is the part that we are going to see. So in this case, when you are talking about the musicality in language, you are talking about intonation, that is the melody or music as a language um, and in this case, it's a definition said by David Crystal, that is the author of a little book of language. And it says that intonation refers to the way your voice uh, rise and falls as you speak. And we have another example in this uh, example set. It is raining, isn't it? In that case, it is like, telling perhaps is raining, no? This is raining, isn't it? 
In this sentence, you are not really asking a question. You are telling the listener that it's raining. So you give your speech a telling melody, the pitch level or your voice fall, and you sound as if you know what you are talking about. And of course you do. So you are making a statement. In this sentence, and I'm going to write the, the sentence because uh, we are talking about that. It is raining. Isn't it? You can may think that you are uh, asking a question, but in this case, you are just using an affirmation or a sentence or a statement because you are like um, making sure that the people is understanding what you are saying. Is it raining, isn't it? Está lloviendo. Lo está. Es como cuando lo decimos de esa, de esa forma. Está lloviendo. Lo está. So in that case, you are like making affirmation about the... Yeah, uh, the good evening, guys. Tell me. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> so in this case, you are telling the listener or are making an affirmation about the words that you are using in this case. So this one is not a question because in that case, you don't need an answer about the situation. You are just telling the listener that it is raining. So in that case, it's telling you in the explanation that you are just um, like telling them that it is raining in that moment. So imagine that you don't know it if, if in this case, if it is raining, and Crystal said, you think there might be a shower outside, but you are unsure. So you ask someone to check you use the same words, but the musicality of your voice make a different point as in. Is it raining? Isn't it? So in that case, it's kind of different because in the first one, is it raining? Isn't it? It's kind of plain. And you are just telling the person that it is raining outside. But when you are not sure about the situation or in this case, it is raining, you are going to change the sound of your voice because you are asking a question. Now you are asking the person, so you give your speech as asking melody. And in this case, it's Crystal who is explaining all of this information. The pitch level or your voice raises and your sound as if you are asking a question. And we have different type of intonation in this case. And we're going to end that part in a couple of minutes. I think in um, five minutes, we're going to end the topic of intonation. And we're going to have the other uh, topic that we're going to see um, in this um session so just for uh, five minutes more talking about intonation so and in this case the types of intonation it says that another key point about intonation involves the rising and falling of your voice just as a, a musical instrument we are talking about the voice, the sound of our voices as instruments. And it says that um, like the instruments raises and falls in its tone as an accomplishment, players create a melody to convey a sense of mood. Your voice raises and falls in a similar melodic way to create a sense of meaning. The thing with the intonation and all of that uh, parts that we are talking about the voice is to make sure that we understand that we are using our voice to express something. And in some cases, we may think that uh, I need to look happy because I don't want to give explanation about the things that I am feeling right now. But you can look happy outside, but when you are talking, your tone of voice is completely different. 
So in this case, when we are making the example, we are talking about the, the example of the instrument, the people that is um, making music, in this case, that person knows how to touch the instrument to make different sounds. And they can make like very sad songs or very sad uh, sounds. And also they can make like, they can use feelings to express something through the music. And we can feel that because we can say, ah, that sound is kind of happy. That sound is kind of dramatic. That uh, sound is kind of scary. Uh, that sound is kind of um, melancholic. Uh, that sounds, it's for a fight or something like that. Like the, the sounds that they use for movies. And in that case, our voice is the same with uh, that example, because we can, um, use our voices to express the way we are feeling. ¿Cuál es el punto importante? Eso lo vamos a resumir rapidito, rapidito. ¿Cuál es el punto importante de la entonación y de todo esto que estamos hablando? Puede llegar a sonar un poco tedioso a toda esta información de, el, de la intonación and all of the things, pero estamos hablando de que nosotros a través de nuestra voz eh, podemos expresar nuestros sentimientos. Ya sea que estemos tristes, felices, enojados, whatever feeling you are, uh, you have in that moment, you are going to express it by your voice. And it's different, it's complete different when you are happy, when you are angry. Because in that case, when you are happy, you, you are like talking um, maybe too much. And when you are angry, it sounds like very, very call and all of that things. So in that case, you need to notice uh, the changes in your voice when you are angry, happy, sad, tired, um, hungry also, and all of that things. So in that case, it is very important also in English language because in that case, you are going to transmit to the listener what is the message do, that you want to give to the others. So. You are going to use your voice to express ideas, meanings, and also feelings. So, in that case, we have all the information that we need to know about the intonation because you have the um, you have some, some explanation about those words. So now we are going to uh, continue with the topic that we are going to develop for the session number two, because we are in session number two of this week. So we're going to have two more days in this week to end week number two, and then we're going to be in the middle of the uh, course. So we are almost, almost, almost in the middle. So we need to complete two more days to be in that situation. So now I was telling at the beginning that we are going to talk about would rather and will prefer. Would rather and will prefer is the topic that we are going to develop right now. So give me a moment to change the page. Here, the topic for today is would rather and will prefer. So in this case, we are going to know what is would rather and would prefer, what are the uses that we can give to those uh, phrases that we have there. And we're going to see some examples and uses or the uses of would rather and would prefer. And also we are going to have like an exercise or two. I don't know, we're going to see. So both would rather and would prefer at use to express preferences in English. Here, and we have some, we have an example. It is a short conversation. It, 
in which we are going to use, we're, rather, and we'll prefer to either state or ask for a preference. So you know, this is the first part. You know that we'll rather and we'll prefer are talking about preferences. So in that case, we're going to use those expressions to talk about preference. And I'm going to write um, a short conversation because we're going to listen the conversation. We're going to read the conversation and we're going to see what is happening in that situation. But first, let me write um, the specification or the information about uh, would rather and would prefer and what is the use that we can give to those sentences. So, We are going to have in our conversation, John and Mary, that are talking about something in a specific, so we are going to see. So in this first conversation, we have two people that are like making plans about the things that they are going to do in the night. So we have John that is um, telling Mary, let's go out tonight. He is uh, starting the conversation and he is uh, giving the ideas. So he said, let's go out tonight. That is the situation. And she said, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. How about going to a film? There is a new film out with Tom Hanks. He wants to go to the movies. He wants to see a movie because there uh, is a new movie. But she said, I rather go out for dinner. I'm hungry. I rather go out for dinner. So in that case, she is using 
I would rather, and then the thing that she prefers to do. And he said, okay, which restaurant would you prefer? So in that case, he is given the opportunity to uh, choose the restaurant that she prefers. And she ends the conversation saying, I prefer to eat at Johnny's. They serve great steaks. So in that case, when we have like different options, uh, we are going to use uh, those expressions. So in that case, you can see in the first one, when we are like making plans, we are going to use, I would rather, and the things that we um, decide to do. Because in that case, you are not like doing the same thing that the, the first person that is talking. And in the other, when you have different options uh, in which you need to choose what is the best option for you, you are going to use also which, that is the question for the options, and would you prefer like a preference of the things that you are uh, doing? And we have another short conversation. Then we are going to talk about the structure. So we're going to see the second example. And then we are going to see the structure for those uh, sentences. And in this one, we have a Sue and Debbie. So in the second conversation, we have two girls that are uh, talking about something related to maybe the university because Sue is telling Debbie that she is not sure which topic to choose for her essay. And Debbie said, well, what are your choices? Sue, I can write about the economy or about a book. Which would you rather write about? I prefer to write about a book. How about Moby Dick? 
No, I rather write about Timothy's gift. So in that case, they are talking about the situation or the uh, the event or the the action that she is going to perform in that case because she need to choose a topic for the essay. So in that case, they are like choosing about the situation. So in that case, she prefers to write about a book and she knows what book she is going to use for the essay. So we are going to see first, or rather a structure. And in this case, it says, use word rather plus the simple form of the verb. In this case, we're going to, say, to use the simple form of the verb. It's common to use word rather in the shortened I rather form in positive statements. In this case, when we're using positive statements, we are going to use word rather. And we are going to use would rather to refer to the present moment or a future moment in time. So in that case, when you are uh, using positive statements, when you are talking about present time and you are talking about future, you are going to use would rather. So in that case, we have three different uses that we can give to the word rather. So when you are uh, using positive statements, when you are talking about the present, and also when you are uh, talking about future moment in time. And we have for positive statements, this one, that is the subject, plus word rather, plus the verb. In this case, remember that you are using that you are using the, um, the simple form of this verb in this case. So we have examples. It says, Peter had rather spend time on the beach. Peter had, in this case is wool. Peter wool rather spend, but in this case, I would write it complete, would rather is spend time, is spend time on the beach. And in the other example, I would rather learn 
a new language. Then a study match. I would rather learn a new language than studying a study math. For questions, we have the following structure. In this case, you are going to use wool at the beginning, plus subject, plus brother, plus verb, plus question mark. And we have some examples. Would you rather stay at home? Would you rather stay at home? Would they rather do homework tomorrow morning? And also we have negative form. The structure is subject plus would rather plus not plus verb. And examples. She would rather not go to class today. She would rather not go to class today. I would rather not answer that question. So in this case, those are the structures for would rather, but also we have like would rather than, would rather or, would rather someone do. So in that case, it's not just um, a kind of a statement. We have other elements that we can add to the would rather sentence to do something different. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to see, would rather than, would uh, rather or, and would rather someone do. So we are going to add some elements to the statement to confer something different. So we're going to see the three different structures related to the would rather. So in this one, we have the first one that is would rather than. And this one said, would rather is often used with then when making a choice between two specific actions. So in this case, you are going to use this specific sentence, would rather than when you have two different options and you are choosing between them. So in that case, you are going to use would rather than.
And we have some examples. And the first one, it says, would you rather eat dinner out than cook dinner tonight? Next one, she would rather play tennis than go horseback riding. Then we have the other one that is rather, it would rather or. This one said, we'll rather can also be used to ask for a choice between two with the conjunction or. So in this case, we are asking for choices between two, two different things in that case. So the first one is when you are making a decision and the second one is when you are asking. And we have the examples. Would you rather eat here or go out? Second one. Would you rather study or watch TV? Then the number three, that is another use that we can give to would rather. In this case, we're going to um, add someone do. In this case, it said that would rather is also used to express what one person prefers another person would do. The structure is similar to the unreal conditional because it expresses an imaginary witch. However, the form is also used to ask a polite question. So in this case, it's like you are uh, wishing someone to do something different. So in this case, it's like um, having a desire that another person do something different. So in that case, it's related or it's like the unreal conditional in which you are using imaginary wishes. So also we are going to use like this structure to ask polite questions.
And we have the structure for this one that is subject plus rather plus person plus past verb. In this case, we are going to use the past verb to express the things that we, uh, which that, that person is uh, or can do in the, in the past. So in that case, we're going to use the past verb. So we have the examples of this structure. And we have this one. Tom would rather marry Bob and Sue. Tom would rather marry both and Sue. Would you rather she stay here with us? So in this case, we're like um, talking about the things that someone uh, or the desire that someone has about one situation and in that case they prefer or they are like uh, making some wishes about the situation because they want that situation changes and they are like talking about the desires that they have in that case. We have for this one, we have different structures for positive question, but in this case, we are not going to use the negative form. We are just going to use the positive and question. And in this case, we are going to do it like this. Subject plus would rather plus the object that in this case, the object is the person, the second person that we add in the first structure. That is the object plus past tense. And we have in the examples, I would rather my son work in finance. I, rather, I would rather I would rather my son worked. So in that case, maybe my son is not studying anything related to uh, money and all of that thing. So in that case, I'd said that I would rather uh, in that case, would rather that she, he is working or he is studying that um, that career because it's something that I like, something that I wish. Second one, Susan would rather Peter lo uh, took a plane. Susan would rather eat took a plane. And for the question, for the question, we have the following structure. We're going to use wood at the beginning plus subject plus brother plus object plus past tense plus question mark. And 
It says, would you rather her sister flew home tomorrow? So in this case, we have this one. Would you rather he came with us to the meeting? So in that case, for what brother, you have a different like um, expressions also. So in this case, we have uh, the information for what brother. In that case, we have the structures. And also we have different uses that you can give to the what brother. We're using then, you are using or, and also you are using uh, the actions that you want a person performs in that case is a wish, but in that case is using and do in that case is the verb in past. Now we have would prefer that is the second uh, structure that we are using. Would prefer this one is also possible to use would prefer instead of would rather to speak about present preferences. In this case, follow preferred by the infinity form of the verb. In this case, you are going to use the infinity form of the verb when you are using will prefer. So in this case, we have the positive uh, statements and we have the uh, structure subject plus would prefer plus infinitive and in this case, remember that when you are using the infinitive, you're going to use to with the verb that you are using. So in the examples, we have the following. It says, Jennifer will prefer to stay at home tonight. Jennifer, that is the subject, the structure will prefer this case is double N will prefer to stay, that is the infinity form of the verb, to stay at home tonight. The second one, the teacher uh, will prefer to have the test next week.
for the question form of this structure, we have the following is um, the, the following formula, and in this case, would plus subject plus prefer plus infinitive. And we have the examples. Would you prefer to go out for dinner tonight? Would you prefer to go out for dinner tonight? And the second one, would they prefer to stay in New York for the week? So in this case, if you uh, have noticed that um, one of the difference that we have in the structure that we are using right now, in the case of would rather and would prefer, in the case of would rather, you are like making choices between two different things. And in this case, you are like um, showing preference uh, in one action. So in this, this case, it's not like we are choosing, um, from two different situation or two different actions. Then we have expressing preferences with prefer. So in that case, we are talking about the preference that we have and we are going to express the preferences. So we are going to see because we have a structures for that part too. Expressing preferences. with prefer. So in this case, we are going to use the simple present with a prefer to express general preferences between people, places, or objects. And we are going to use the preposition to, to state your preference. In this case, we are not going to use will. In this case, we are going to use the present, um, the simple present structure but we are going to add a uh, prefer to talk about preferences. So in this case, we're not going to use the uh, structure um, of would prefer. In this case, we're going to use the simple present plus prefer. So in this case, we're going to see the structure for the positive statements. And in this one, you have the subject. Then you have prefer. In this case, you are not going to add wool. Then we have the object. Two plus another object. And we have the examples.
We have, she prefers coffee to tea. She prefers coffee. In this case, you are talking about your preferences. And in this case, you are not uh, making a choice. You are talking about that you prefer coffee than tea. So in that case, you're not making a uh, uh, an election or you are not choosing between coffee and tea because in this case, you know what is the thing that you like. So this is not like in the other structure. I prefer summer vacations to winter vacations. And the structure for question, in this case, we're going to use do because we don't have the auxiliary rule. Do plus subject plus prefer plus object plus two plus object. And I'm going to make uh, write a, an example because it's time to end the session. So we're going to see the example and we're going to end this session number two. Do you prefer wine to beer? And the second one, does she prefer New York to Chicago? So in that case, we have there the uses of will prefer and will rather. And tomorrow we are going to have the check um, the, the exercises that we have for the platform. So at the beginning of the session number three, we are going to have the two exercises that we have there. So in that case, you are making like, um, you are trying to uh, choose between two things, but you can use, uh, do you prefer coffee than tea? You can do it also in that case, it's correct. So we're going to end the session here and we're going to see each other tomorrow. Have a good night and see you in session number three. Thank you, good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. Good night, everyone. Bye, Bye-bye.